Hello Svengers, it's me Svenny McG. I'm here with a quick video today just to talk about cable management. I posted something on Facebook and Instagram recently and got quite a few uh, responses on different ways people maintain and take care of all those extra cables, cords and everything else. Um, again, so here we're looking at some different ones here. We've got a Nintendo and a PlayStation, uh, some AV cables, we've got controllers, we have uh, this one here is Sega, looks like another Sega, you know, we've got the uh, the boxes here right at the end. Um, again, trying to maintain these, keep it from being just this one big junky mishmash, a la this box over here. So we want to try and keep things contained and down to a certain order, and I've seen a lot of different ways of, of people discussing it. Uh, twist ties, using uh, Velcro is always a great one. Good Velcro is nice and reusable, like twist tie. Zip ties, unfortunately, they're kind of a one-time deal. And of course, with the zip tie, if you pull it too tight, you risk uh, severing or snapping the cords, causing, uh, you know, just, just starting to shorten the life of the cords. So I have a certain way that I've been maintaining doing things, and so far it's been working out fairly well for me. So I, uh, I'd like to discuss that a bit today. Let's have a look. So here I've got one of the Sega ones and for power and you can see here what I want to try and do is just simplify it just get it nice and nice and tight put together so again people have different ways some people like to wrap it around the boxes or just you know tighten it up you can do that that's those are all good things everything you're gonna see that I try to do today I want to try and maintain the integrity of the actual cable here right here this is where things always split people put too much stress strain pull this down once this gets pulled i mean you have pinch points here a lot of times you always see split cables we want to try and avoid uh splitting the casing uh because eventually once this casing part goes and then people are walking around just carrying these uh you're pulling you know it, you're really risking pulling and wrecking the integrity of the cable itself. Those cables are meant to have electricity pass through them. They're not necessarily meant to be structural. That's where the casing comes into place here for protection. Also for safety. I mean, no one wants to get electrocuted. That's really is number one. But number two is going to be maintaining it just so that we don't have any issues and severing the cables underneath and not being able to actually use this anymore. So one method that I've kind of come through myself is like I said we want to keep this straight what I do is put your hand through and then just start wrapping and we're gonna go gentle here we're not gonna try and you know see purple fingers and we're just gonna go around and around and as you can see I just continue and maintain and again we're keeping it you know going straight through here so we're not gonna have any pinch here and how many times you go around really doesn't matter. What you want by the time you're done is a certain amount of cabling left over. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to cinch it together. And then I'm going to just run it around a couple times. Again, how many doesn't really matter. And then we're going to insert through. And then pull it a little bit taut. And there you have it. Now I can pull it right on here and carry it out. And we've maintained the integrity of the cable. And what I like to see too is sometimes, for example here, this is one of the power inverters here. This looks like it's gonna be for a, a Sega Model 2, a Genesis Model 2. And I can tell by the yellow tip on the end, you get familiar with these after a while. This will not work on a Model 1. So, that is important to me. If I have this cable sitting around somewhere um, and I pick it up, oh great, Sega, I need this. Oh, this isn't going to be the one I actually need. I want to be able to see the end. And again, that's something I've tried to maintain with wrapping these. So I can look at this. I have this hanging somewhere. I can say, hey, there's the Sega one. It says right on the box. There's the tip. Is that going to work? 
perfect. Let's see a conversation here, just to show them, of course, this that wrapping technique isn't unique to Sega Model 2 controller or uh, power supplies. Uh, of course, this is a power supply. This was the original Model 1, so you can see it does not have the yellow tip to it. And this one is an original NES. And again, you can see there's really nothing too crazy going on here, but they are wrapped the same. They are going to hold the same. And again, I can always see what input is going to be required here from the ends when they're hanging on the shelf. So I can tell immediately, aside from putting masking tape down, I can actually look and say, okay, these are both Sega, but what am I looking at here? And I can know myself, I can differentiate just by looking at the actual inputs coming from the units themselves. And even slightly more modern here, we have uh, basic power uh, connections for an Xbox or a PlayStation. Uh, again, just simple inputs, but holding, maintaining that hand span, wrapping around, you know, left about an inch or so coming down from the bottle of the cabling. Now here, again, we're not so worried about, uh, you know, something snapping here, but it's just an organizational way of keeping these together and not having these lengths of cable just strewn about in a box somewhere. I know I can just pull this out. Here we go. It's for a, either a PlayStation or an Xbox power supply. Plug it in, ready to go. Now here again, I had some, I found this controller. Someone had wrapped this up for me. And while I always appreciate the help, again, having this just wrapped right around the controller like that, straight up, we're putting all the stress right on here. And eventually this is gonna go, you're gonna see severing right here. It's gonna continue to pull, pull apart and unfortunately that's where you know we start to have failure so again I'm gonna take the cord we're just gonna straighten it out and so you're gonna see the same thing where I'm going to try and maintain that now what I do here I don't have to necessarily run the loop or run I don't mind wrapping controllers up around themselves but what I do is make sure that I maintain having a straight line coming right out of there I don't want any kinks or anything to be pulling against the grain here with the controller so I'm gonna wrap it up and I'm going to just slowly start to go around and maintain and I'll go back across the other way with controller really doesn't matter like I said just trying to maintain keeping it straight out of the controller now with cube controllers sometimes you can squeeze it up here and it'll sit if you can get it to come and seat right in the loop that's great too but again, the whole premise is I don't want to try and do anything destructive here. I haven't had to use any other materials in order to achieve this. And you can see here, here's GameCube. But you can see I've been able to do the exact same here. This is a first party Sega Genesis controller. Same thing, just wrapped it up, maintaining, not putting any additional stress here. Sony PlayStation. Again, these ones hold kind of nice because if you can get the connector piece through, Usually it'll allow you to hold it in place and keep it from falling apart. But again, I don't mind wrapping it around the controller myself, but I do not want to simply pull it right from go and just have it stretch and pull that cable down and have it tear. And yes, it even works on true retro. You can see here, this is an original NES controller. Same thing, wrapped it around, always maintaining the support. And last but certainly not least here, you get the picture now, just wrap it around a handspan, but just to show, again, here's a PlayStation AV connection. So without cranking anything or having to use any materials, that's probably most important here. Uh, able to just wrap it up. Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, GameCube. This is, uh, you know, your standard composite here. And look at over here we have the Sega Genesis, this is an RF unit. Now, I don't worry about doing anything with the top here, but again, I can hang it on the shelf this way and I can look at it. I know which output it's gonna require and it's gonna hang down and I know that this is RF. Here we have the original Sega. This one's for the master system. Again, it's an RF unit. Uh, of course, compared to that other model that we were looking at, you can see this one has the multi-pin. This one's just a straight RF, but again, nothing unique going on here. I've wrapped the cabling. It's gonna hold. 
I'm not putting any stress on the RF box. And finally here, we have the Nintendo Entertainment System. Again, an RF one I've maintained. Again, this one doesn't have any extra support here, so I really don't want to just wrap it around the box, stress it out. These things are over 30 years old now, so let's not try and put any extra or unnecessary wear and tear. We're just going to have it just draped like so. And again, I know it's RF pin. I can see everything when it's hanging on a shelf. My apologies if uh, you pick up any of that ambient noise here, but we do have uh, my air exchanger going on. But here you can see, uh, these are just plain clear Tupperware bins, but this is the way I find easiest for now to organize my controllers. And like I said, I have various different ones here, different PlayStation, some memory cards, rumble packs, Xbox, 64. So using these bins, this is the best way I've found so far in order to uh, keep uh, my stuff together. All right, and here in uh, my storage area here, I apologize for all the shadows, but unfortunately with the lighting I've got, it's the best we can handle for now. Fortunately here, my basement here had a pegboard and just using some of the pegs themselves, I'm able to line them up and use them as I want. So for, like I said here, again, we already discussed these ones are not, uh, these RF cables are not all one in the same, but for now, at least I know they're Sega. Uh, everything's hanging, I can see the cables. I can tell right away which connection type there are here. There's an RF, here's another one. I've got some power supplies. Lots and lots of Sega of the PlayStation uh, AV cables here, uh, Nintendo right over here. So again, you know, I've got a lot, uh, a lot of different cables here. But best way I find just to be organized is uh, sorting everything out. And like I said, using this technique of wrapping it without having to use any other supplies. If I'm on the go, if I'm doing one of my retro video game nights out and about, I can wrap the cables back up. I don't have to run around. And look for any uh, other devices to try and maintain some sanity when organizing these cables so hope that you found this uh, little video helpful and some of the tricks if you think uh, you have something unique that you do please let me know send me a message and uh, yeah have yourself a great day as always take care be good to each other bye now